kick off time. That's not because of uh, the TV schedules, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's because of a, a variety of football code. Um, it's for a variety of different um, um, meetings that happen in today. Can you hear what I'm saying? No. That better? Is that any better? That's better. There we go. Yeah. Okay then, if we can, can make a start. Um, can I ask for apologies for that? Any further apologies? I'm looking around the room, we've got a couple of people um, missing, but so we've not received them. Like that? Okay. Could do with a headset, really. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving on then uh, for declarations of, of interest. That's just for me to remind everyone that if there is anything now or at any time during the meeting, please don't hesitate to raise that accordingly so we can record it and deal with the, the necessary um, paperwork and declarations. Third item is the minutes of the last meeting that we held uh, back uh, in March. Um, can I move that those are uh, an accurate record of our previous meeting? Okay, I shall sign those off accordingly. Um, and moving into the substantive stuff for today, item four is the quarterly bus update, and Laura's going to present the boys. Connectivity project. 
Um, and we've got stakeholder and community engagement events plans to take place this summer, which will provide more information on the bus rerouting element. In January, we saw the introduction of the joint inspectorate in the city centre and also the withdrawal of paper timetables in leaflets in St Helens. With the latter, a series of digital workshops, customer engagement and support ensured that there was minimal impact uh, for our customers and overall a good response to the project. And punctuality and reliability schemes have been completed at Winter Drive this quarter and also progressing on other schemes in other areas. Um, while improving punctuality continues to be a core focus of the Bus Alliance partners, it's good to see the Bus Passenger Survey reported a 2% increase in satisfaction of journey time across the region by our customers. Um, the Better by Bus campaign continues to raise awareness of bus travel across the region and the 2018-19 campaign prioritises workplace engagement as well as the schools programme and leisure activities. Um, in addition, it's worth noting that most travel officers continue to work with the Confederation of Passenger Transport to engage smaller bus operators um, across the region in the bus alliance as well. Just picking up on the new conditions of contract, um, these have been developed and all operators are now agreed to migrate and adopt these by the deadline of the 22nd of April. Um, work is underway to develop a lead table to detail the city, regions, operators and to draft, test and launch a, a DPS or a dynamic purchasing system. Um, just to conclude, the Bus Alliance Programme Board will be signing off the investment and milestones of the 2017-18 business investment plan at their next meeting on the 16th of April. And along with the work streams, we look forward to implementing the new improvements and the new plan in this next financial year. Um, thank you for listening. If you've got any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Um, before I bring in the others, you just mentioned about um, the work we do with CPT and smaller operators to try to get them involved out yourself or my or I'll say where we're up to with that, because I know we're doing a lot, but do you want to expand on it a little bit of where, where we're up to? Um, well, I think we're doing a lot of work with the source of frustration for me, this particular um, this particular subject. In particular, I think is the bus industry talk to us quite a lot about kind of partnership being the way forward and the development of meaningful partnerships between operators and local authorities being the best way to deliver bus services. So the fact that we've only got a region stagecoach as part of the alliance and we haven't got any other operators, despite the fact we signed the agreement that I need to is a source of frustration. Laura touched on the fact that we are actively, <coughs> and, or have, have been for two years pretty much actively uh, encouraging small operators to uh, uh, join the alliance. We've explained the benefits uh, as we see them of, of operators uh, joining. Uh, as Laura mentioned, we've re recently engaged the CPT uh, in, uh, in kind of helping, to, uh, helping that conversation and, and Hopefully, another voice kind of trying to encourage uh, operators to, uh, to join the alliance. We've met twice uh, with CPT and uh, with a group of small operators, but if I'm honest, only limited progress um, is being made. I think we will we'll continue to, to kind of keep talking with CPT and keep talking with uh, smaller operators because I think by talking, that is the only way we're going to uh, make some. Make progress. And I think just, just one other thing to add is that over the last few months as well, we've developed the concept of associate membership of the Bus Alliance, which is really there to try and allay some of the fears, particularly around investment, um, that some smaller operators will have to make to, to meet fleet standards that, that we expect. Uh, and even despite the fact we've, we've created that kind of stepping stone to, to, to full membership, again, progress has been, been quite slow. So overall, we, we're, we're trying, we have been trying for, for a long time, but unfortunately, it's in progress been made. Yeah, thanks for that. That's a fantastic to you and the team for, for all the work that we know you, you're doing on this. Um, please keep on doing it, because we do want the smaller operators to be involved, but also as well, we need them to grasp the strong hand of friendship that's being offered to them. So you know, very much keep doing what you're doing, but we also need to make sure that they understand that we're here to work with them. They need to sort of step up and, and join the party with us. Okay. Any further questions or comments, Ron? Yeah, um, 
the report marks another gateway in the development of this business case. Um, if approved by the committee and also by the combined authority later in the month, it will move us from um, the strategic outline business case stage of the process onto the outline business case um, stage. So the report focuses largely on the conclusions that we've reached um, so far. In particular, um, why we think there's a need for intervention and change, some of the options that are available to us, uh, including their potential benefits, but also some of their uh, risks as well. Uh, and also proposes a narrow list of options to take forward for assessment at, at the next stage. So we want to make sure that yourselves, uh, as transport committee members, and as well as other key stakeholders as well, and decision makers, uh, we want to make sure that uh, for you it's absolutely clear um, what we're doing in, in this business case so that we can ensure that um, robust and well-informed decision making is made both now uh, and in the future around this business case as well. The report contains quite a number of um, recommendations including that this report also goes forward to the next meeting of the combined authority, uh, confirmation of that narrowed down um, proposed list of options but also the issue of statutory notices and uh, requests for data for bus operators. Uh, I can't stress highly enough really that this is a hugely important and significant piece of, uh, of work. So, Chair, if you'll permit me, I'll spend maybe a little bit more time than I normally would talking through uh, some of the detail of the report and, and just I really want to highlight some of the, the key issues around where we are so far. So, for us, I think the starting point is devolution in the Bus Services Act. Uh, the Bus Services Act was made uh, law last year and gives new options for local authorities in respect of improving bus services. In respect of mail combined authorities such as uh, the Liverpool City Region, that includes automatic access to franchising powers but also new partnership powers. As well as that, the legislation which enabled us to form the alliance uh, remains in place. So the Act and the secondary legislation uh, that goes with it outlines the process to be followed when looking at the potential for each of these options, which is really the development of a treasury-style business case, which you may sometimes hear called a green book business case or a five case uh, business case. And this, is, in essence, is what we've been working on now for over 12 months in the department. First stage of the process, which is called the Strategic Outline Programme, started in uh, January last year, was completed in June, and since then we've been working on this Strategic Outline case, with the idea being that each case builds on the work of, of the previous one. So I'd like to spend just a few moments focusing on a number of different areas of the business case, and then I'll be really happy to take uh, any detailed questions after that. So firstly, the case for change and the need for intervention. So in simple terms, we're looking to explain why we're spending all this time and all this effort and, and money as well, uh, even looking at this in, in the first place. And it's important that we can robustly answer that question. I think members of this committee will understand the role that bus services play in supporting the region's economy, and in particular, access to opportunity. And within that, the public sector through Mersey Travel plays a critical role in the sustainability of, uh, of the bus network and the bus offer, particularly through things like uh, providing supportive bus services, paying for concession of travel, and also our participation in, uh, in the bus alliance. In the year just gone, uh, Mersey Travel allocated around 80% around of its budget to activities which in one way or another um, supported bus services. Some of this goes directly to bus operators, and the contribution we make to bus operator income is around a third of total uh, operator income. However, our reducing budget over, over recent years has meant that we're spending less and less money on bus services. So our ability to retain the same level uh, of service on that basis, given the contribution that the public sector makes, is bluntly severely compromised without doing something about it. The forecasts that we've, um, that we've produced so far in, in the business case predict that without effective intervention, operating costs for bus operators will grow at a faster rate than uh, passenger revenue will over time, over our 10 year horizon. So in order to maintain profit margins, 
for bus operators, our expectation would be that services would be cut back to save cost and maintain those margins. I think in the past, Mersey Travel would have been in a position to step in in this scenario by providing supportive bus services, but we're increasingly unable to do this now due to our funding position. In our objectives around things like access to opportunity, the things that are highlighted in uh, the transport plan for growth and the bus strategy are compromised going forward. So our conclusion, therefore, is that it's highly appropriate for us to look at the options that are available to help us meet those challenges. So moving on now to the intervention options available, we've identified five possible scenarios, which I'll, I'll just talk through briefly. So the first one is to continue with the intervention that we already have, which is the bus alliance. That is an intervention, and um, committee members just had a, a, an update in the previous report, but you'll all be very familiar now with the alliance, what it's achieved so far in terms of growth in customer satisfaction, and also growth in fair pay patronage, which is booking all the national trends around, uh, around bus patronage. And we're delighted really locally that we've got one of the best bus partnerships around. However, as we also just touched on in the previous report, we've only got our even stagecoach as part of uh, as part of that partnership. So there's a big chunk of the network still that isn't covered by the alliance, and that's a weakness of it. There's also a scenario which sees the alliance not there, not in existence. So any of the parties from this year are, uh, are free to uh, serve notice. Um, on the alliance, so the three year notice period. Next option is enhanced partnership, which is a new type of partnership model. And I think one of the key differences between that and the alliance is that in that scenario, all operators will be, will be bound by the terms of that partnership. But in the, in the development process, operators will also get um, the opportunity to object to that through, uh, through a voting mechanism. In theory, you can do pretty much anything you want under an enhanced partnership, with the exception of uh, individual fare setting levels. Franchising is a much more radical uh, option. In effect, this is a suspension of the existing deregulated market. And under that model, uh, the public sector, rather than the private sector, will determine what bus services will be provided. So that includes things like quality standards, fares, what the network looks like, what the timetables look like, branding, etc. And then operators would bid for the right to operate those services under contract. So it's a move from competition in the marketplace to competition for, for the marketplace. And then finally, advanced quality partnerships builds on previous legislation around statutory quality partnerships, but broadens out the obligations of the public sector to include softer things such as for example, parking enforcement rather than solely infrastructure, um, for example, bus priority or stopping facilities, which potentially can be uh, restrictive in, uh, in, in that scenario. So, from these five different options, we pro propose to take forward an assessment of three of those. So, we propose to take forward assessments of enhanced partnerships, franchising, and also um, our existing bus alliance. And it, I really want to reiterate this, that it's important to recognise in this assessment that the Alliance is very much a serious option for us. And I think we're in a really fortunate position that we've got something in existence now against which we're able to properly measure the potential benefits but also the risks of the other options. So briefly turning to um, the implications of, of some of these options, and this is, this is, this is very brief, uh, but I just wanted to pick out some of, some of the points. I think it's clear that um, both enhanced partnership and to a greater extent franchising potentially gives Mersey Travel and the combined authority more ability to influence what happens on the bus network, which in turn could be geared towards um, meeting our strategic aims, things to set out in our, in our various transport strategies. Franchising in particular means a much greater financial, um, financial stake for the public sector in the system. This in turn may come with much greater risks and also significantly higher costs around, in particular around implementation and ongoing management of the system. But whichever option is taken forward, we need to ensure that the system is one that's financially sustainable and efficient, 
so that we can deal with some of those challenges that I outlined earlier in the need for, for intervention. And finally, and I think again this is a really important point, we must look at these options and the assessment of these options within the context of, um, of public sector funding, but not as the solution to some of the challenges that we face uh, in the public sector around some of the funding. I think that's an important distinction for some So moving on, if, uh, if the, this report's uh, approved, the next stage for us will be moved will be to move to an outline business case, which will be the formal assessment of those three options that I've just outlined. The work we've completed to date forms the basis of those assessments, but would need to go into much more detail. Section 3.10 of the report goes into uh, some of the detail around what that assessment would, uh, would entail. But one of the first tasks that we would have is to publish statutory notices uh, outlining the fact that we will be commencing, in particular the, um, the franchising and the enhanced partnership assessments, those two things uh, are prescribed in, uh, in legislation. We'd be entitled to a range of uh, information from bus operators so that we can better understand some of the costs and revenue implications of the options that are available to us. So in that we're going to need to look at what information might be available from bus operators, what we would require for a robust assessment, how we may best obtain this information, and within that really balancing our need to carry out a robust assessment with not placing too onerous a burden on the bus operators as well. However, we would anticipate that this request for information does happen fairly early on in the, uh, in, in the process, in, in, in the next stage. I just wanted to finish really with a couple of other points that I wanted to bring out. Firstly, we haven't identified in this particular report any equality and diversity implications at this point. However, our plan would be to carry out a detailed equality impact assessment as part of the outline business case work. So I just wanted to give some, uh, some assurance around, uh, around that particular item. And then finally, we've been keeping key stakeholders up to date with uh, business case process, the, the business case progress in an ongoing process. So those include our neighbouring authorities, but also bus operators. And our approach with them has been a uh, very open one, really, around the fact that we are undertaking, or we will be undertaking these assessments, but we are fully committed to the alliance as well, and to continuing to deliver improvements for customers in partnership with operators, and, and that hasn't changed. So that, that concludes what I wanted to talk about in terms of the report. I'd be happy to feel any questions. Thanks for that. Um, Martin, thanks for a very good and detailed um, presentation of that. We've got any questions or comments? We've got Ken first. Thanks, John. Thanks. Uh, Matt, thanks for an excellent, superb report. Um, you, know, you, you walked us through it meticulously. I'm sure everybody will thank you for that because what this sets out is what we have to look to do in the coming uh, months and possibly years to do to serve the people what we're here to serve. So can I thank you for that outline and can I thank you for the presentation and as I say it gives us an awful lot of work to do in the future to meet the needs of our travelling public. Yeah, I just want to just, uh, to just uh, also thank you, Mike, for the report and uh, the significant contribution that obviously you made to the report. Uh, but I'd just like to just also say the fact that what is the co cooperation we've had from the big operators uh, regarding the alliance and some of the significant uh, goals achieved on the process. And I would urge all operators, not just the big ones, but all operators to be part of this process going forward and to share information with us uh, to allow us for the best outcome for all involved, that's the operators in the travelling public uh, and shells, whoever else is involved in this process, because the process will go forward and it's better going forward in the, in the spirit of cooperation than it is in the spirit of animosity. That's right, Les. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, Matt, I just want to echo some of those words that's been said. Excellent report, absolutely superb. 
well, well um, pointed out all, all the reasons for the report too. Um, I, I, for a long time, have wondered about our losing influence over the bus companies. As a, as a Merseyside Travel Authority, our responsibilities are to try and put in the best uh, services as we can for our tra travelling public. And some of that was being lost, being able to, to, to have. And this report shows a way that we can actually start to readdress that balance. And I'm, I'm really, really pleased with that. So I welcome the report, absolutely excellent. And uh, whichever way we decide to come out of this, you know, whichever way we decide to, to go, uh, I'm sure it's going to enhance what we need to do as a uh, travel authority. Patrick. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, my question relates to the equality and diversity and equality impact assessments. Um, to, enshrined within that is it an assessment of social value also part of the consideration? How you assess social value? I'd be interested in what kind of methodology that's not now, obviously, but for how you actually will include the measurements of social value as opposed to cost. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. I, 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 the stage we're at at the moment, we're still determining the full scope of the next stage of the process, but I think that comment's absolutely valid and that's something we'll certainly pick up in, in the scope of development. I can't directly answer your question about how we would do it, but we'll certainly pick that up. Yeah, that's not, I'm obviously going to that back to how that, that develops that would be correct as well. If there's no further kind of questions or comments, I'll just sort of sum so, so up and, and you know, echo a lot of what's already been said, but I think it, it, it's worth um, re saying. First and foremost, it's a very significant piece of work so thanks to all the team that have been involved and there's many many people across the bus division and others that have already been involved in what's very significant uh, work it's obviously very welcome that the bus services act through our devolution deal gives us some new options uh, that are able to, to look at and obviously as part of this work whilst we're starting to uh, define what those options are we're still looking at a whole range of different options and effectively where we're moving to now is really the very detailed phase of the work uh, that we will expect to take some months really looking at kind of all of those options so what does re-emerge back to us that we, uh, we look forward to uh, is a very strong evidence-led recommendation that we can sort of look forward to receiving because it's absolutely exactly like Ron and Les and Ken and others have said um, we really look forward to how we can look at delivering the very best bus network in the city region so thanks ever so much for the work that's already been done really looking forward to the very detailed work uh, that's about to come so if everyone is in agreement i'll move recommendation in paragraph two of the report if that's agreed I agree. I agree. Yes. okay then item six is the clean bus technology fund and steam thanks chair um, it's just a brief report to note uh, recently successful as a city region securing just under 3 million from DEFRA to the FT to retrofit a uh, number of um, buses with particular trucks to improve emissions. Um, a total of 149 vehicles will be retrofitted um, Arriva, Stagecoach, Comfy Bus, and Holder Transport um, were successful with, with uh, their bids. To provide the context, it's just over a quarter of the Type fleet now, uh, which is Euro 5 or earlier, now will have um, particular trucks added to their vehicles to, uh, to make the emissions straight to Euro 5, Euro 6, and so that's quite a significant number. Uh, and the funding is split between 2017 and 18, which we've already received, and the kind of as we've made out of the bus operators. The next half will come in this financial year uh, with the spent.
So let's just note that we have successfully received from the bill. Any questions? Okay, I'll tell us. City region wide, there's currently some work under, being undertaken looking at what some of the potential options might be for us around air quality and emission standards of vehicles, which, which include buses. What we're trying to do is kind of get ahead of the game a little bit on that, and I think we've done that through the bids. And this is, I think, the third successful round of bidding is almost £10 million pounds of external funding that's been brought in over the last kind of two or three years. So we're kind of trying to get ahead of the game on that. Conditions of contract reform that Laura touched on earlier actually raises the bar for bus operators for supported services. So it increases the engine standards that we expect from, uh, from bus operators for supported services to Euro 5. So it'll take us a little bit of time to get there, but actually not, not that long. We're starting to see Euro 3 in particular drop off, and I think I think it's two years time, I think Euro 4 will kind of will drop off the, uh, the system. So we're starting to see that kind of increase in, in engine standards and really it's to get ahead of the game I think in terms of what the city region decides to do around, around air quality. And in particular for us it's about making sure that buses are seen as part of the solution to the air quality problem and not part of the, the problem. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Dr. Porter and Dan. Congratulations on securing um, funding. Uh, in regards to item 4.1, financial breakdown of uh, funding secured, just a, a bit of uh, information, clarification. We, I know complete buses uh, in terms of their total cost for the period 2017 18 is less 
uh, more in 2018 19, it's doubled, and yet it's just three vehicles. Can you explain why this is? Sure. Um, Comfy Bus are slightly different to the operators. They're actually uh, re engineering three vehicles. They're moving the four engines. So the conversion, uh, the reason for split is the conversion was going to be on on seventeen eighteen production year to this production year. So that was just the reason for split. Okay. Further questions or comments? I'll just echo some of the comments and the fact that um, it's great that we won this uh, bit. I think it's worth sort of noting that what's already been achieved on the network. Um, already sees a significant amount of bus fleet locally that are lower emissions anyway and it's great that with this additional funding that will go some way to kind of do an additional tranche uh, of the bus network and moving towards that goal of a, a fully uh, lower emission fleet across the whole of the city of the bus network. So we look forward to the next funding bit you're going to put in Steve and hopefully that will be just as successful as this one. If I can move the recommendations in paragraph two of the report, if that's agreed. Agreed. Excellent. Item seven is a travel safety presentation. I'm to Nicky in there. So to go on to the front, Nicky.